He's back. <laughs> hey everybody, this is John with Cork.com. Sitting next to me is a guy that you probably learned a little bit about uh, from a couple videos, videos ago that we published. Uh, I'm going to give him a chance to introduce himself. We were hanging out just a few days ago um, on the other side of the pond, just outside of Zhigandas at the, uh, the Grenache Symposium. In that video, we were focusing on Grenache. That was the star grape of the weekend. Uh, I wanted to get a chance, though, to talk a little more about uh, some of the other exciting varietals that are being grown in Australia and just about the Australian wine scene in general. Uh, that being said, I'm going to turn it over to you. Chester, would you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Chester Oswald, fourth generation winemaker from Darrenburg, McLaren Vale, South Australia. Perfect. So, like I said, last weekend we were focusing on Grenache and Grenache only. Um, but you're doing some really fun stuff down in Australia with some other varietals that people probably aren't too familiar with, two of which are sitting here. Uh, let's start with the first one. We have Viognier. Uh, talk about growing Viognier in Australia and the appellation that you're growing it in. Absolutely. Well, so McLaren Vale is right on the sea there, and uh, we do really good Grenache, Shiraz, and Morvedra, which are the Southern Rome Reds, of course. So I thought back in the mid-90s, it's a big good idea to plant Viognier because you know, we do quite good Chardonnays and Riesings and Savignons too, but the white Rome variety should work really well. So we planted actually uh, quite a lot of acres and growers were all saying, oh, I want to plant some too. So uh, before I knew it, 140 acres of Viognier planted hadn't even made a Viognier at this stage. It had more than all of Condria, you know, for France where it's grown, so it's pretty bizarre. But it works really, really well and it soon became our number one white grape that we actually now sell uh, uh, as either the last ditch Viognier or the Hermit Crab. We have, uh, which is a Viognier Marsan blend, but, uh, but uh, yeah, it, we have a nice cool nights, so it has really good acidity and mineralness. You don't have to get it too ripe. It's only about like 13% alcohol instead of 14 half, which a lot of Viognier's are. But uh, you know, Viognier's a great grape. It has so much blossom and ginger and, and tropical characters, and, uh, and uh, it's quite unctuous, full flavour with a you know, lovely length of fruit, apricots and everything. It's really, really a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, another varietal which we actually have in our glass right now, Sagrantino. A lot of people aren't familiar with it whatsoever. Those people that are familiar with it, they know it from the Montefalco region within Umbria in Italy. You're planting it down in Adelaide. Talk about that. Yeah, McLaren Vale. Um, well, I actually love you know, great wines from all around the world, so I'm planting everything just about you know, that I can get my hands on in, in McLaren Vale. And because we don't know, you know whether these varieties are going to work or not, and, and Italy's quite warm, and so that's probably similar climate in some ways. So uh, we you know, thought it's worthwhile trying. And you know, it's quite a tannic wine, say Grantino. But uh, this is the first release, 2007, uh, and uh, and it already won a trophy for the best alternative wine in, in the alternative wine show in Australia. But it's really savoury. It doesn't look Australian this wine. You know, Australian wines are often quite generous and full and ripe and, and lush. This is really savoury and you know, really spicy savoury herb like characters and long length of savouriness and, and I added sin soak to it which is a, a, a fourth most popular variety in Chateauneuf to Bat. It's a variety that is really flowery and uh, violet like and, and elegant middle palate with really florals like lavender and bath salts and really long minerals and fineness but without a lot of tannin. So I added 9% sin soak to this too so that it just reduced the tannins and lifted the fragrance a little bit and you know, it worked, just worked really, really well. We call it the Senesilicophobic Cat, which is, uh, Senesilicophobia is the fear of an empty glass. And you know, being a winemaker, of course, I've got the fear of an empty glass. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I, I have this philosophy that I'm deadly serious about our winemaking, up until when the wine ends up in the bottle. And from then on, it all should be fun, because really, what can I do to change it once the, the top's on it? So you know, we have all these quirky names, and, and I have all these props as well that uh, follow me around. So this is a cat for the Senate for the Phobic Cat. But I look, you know, there's one for every one I've got that travel around the world with me. It's, all, it's a lot of fun. Beautiful. Beautiful. So obviously you've been doing a lot of traveling lately. You, you know, you were in France last week, now you're traveling through the United States a little bit. And my guess is that's because finally the 2010 vintage has gotten wrapped up and you, you start the winemaking process. Uh, let's talk about 2010 a little bit in Australia. There's been a little bit of buzz around it. What, have, what was the vintage like? Uh, it was really good because it was pretty hassle-free. There was one little problem. We had in um, uh, flowering, there was a, a heat wave flight we haven't seen before. It was about three degrees above ever, three degrees Celsius above what we've ever had in, that, in, in November. And it did burn a lot of the 
grass uh, uh, flowers off, so really low yielding grass. But quality wise, that, that's fantastic because Grenache is a variety that the lower the yield, the better the wine. It's like Pinot Noir in that way too. And, and, but the other varieties didn't seem to get affected too much. And, uh, and it was pretty mild from then on. We had enough winter rain to, to get through without irrigation in a lot of the vineyards. And uh, um, they, it was calm. It was an early vintage, but the wines are uh, very uh, fragrant, they have a beautiful elegance, a very long mineral characters without being blocky tannins, you know, not aggressive, and, uh, and they'll, they'll, I think they'll age really gracefully and look really pretty. Beautiful, beautiful. 2010 sounds like something to look for. Um, so let's go back to the Grenache Symposium, which we just wrapped up with. Um, you're widely considered one of the best dressed guys in all of Australia <laughs> based on this shirt. Certainly loudest. Maybe. <laughs> a lot of people play with his best dress. <laughs> I, yeah, I made this shirt in Vietnam. They, they saw it and they said, well, that's crazy. I mean, uh, uh, you want to wear this? Like, you know, this is, this is not, you know, it's flowers. It's not men's stuff, you know, they're saying. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 that's for me, you know. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I, and uh, at the Grenache Conference, it came up with this idea that we should have an international Grenache Day. We come up on the 24th of September that everyone worldwide has to wear a loud shirt in honour of Grenache. And all the restaurants have to pour Grenache by the glass and you know, just get Grenache on their runs loops because it's a great grape variety. It's really loud, complex, you know, fruity wine and earth and everything. And just like a loud shirt, it's loud and, and complex and fruity, I suppose. You know? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So the date that is September 24th? I That's think? right. Awesome. Well, uh, we'll make sure to look for that, guys. We'll, uh, we'll keep you updated with information as we lead up to International Grenache Day. Um, Chester, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to with us, fill yeah. us in a little bit about what's going on down in Australia with you and the rest of the wine scene down there. We appreciate it. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers.